So let, let's remind us of what it looks like. Here you are this year. And there's, uh, uh, I'm going to say it from a Texas standpoint, hey. Uh, I mean, Robert says it's so good from a Hebraic standpoint. But, you know, we're here and that's how we speak. Uh, so we've got the hey, life, which means life, inviting us in. All right? So the issue is how you're going to step into new life. Now, to step into new life, you have to step into new sound, and you have to step into new movement. Now, let me remind you, this year it is your season for a new breakthrough. New breakthrough. Everybody say new breakthrough. And let me remind you also that, and see, when I see these words, I have a whole scenario built within me over what breakthrough means. Now, here's one of two things I have to do. I can process out of that scenario of what I know breakthrough means so far in my life. But I've got to be searching for revelation to take me beyond that. All right? I was with Barbara Yoda yesterday and she actually has rewritten the breaker anointing, and she's added three chapters to it. So from the first time when she published it to now, it's gone beyond. And so that becomes an important dynamic in your life that you're thinking, all right, now I, I, I know this. And faith is built on a lot of times how you have a uh, uh, developed within you an understanding of certain principles. But there's a place beyond, your, beyond what you're carrying. All right? And so it seems that my role in the body of Christ this year is to try to get us all beyond. All right? Now, that's what really happens with the Lord's Prayer. Where you're having to go up, see, the Lord gives us access. Jesus isn't down here with us. And I think that's, uh, some people can't get past that. I remember when I said that in the Baptist church, they thought I was a heretic. <laughs> but see, he's not down here. He's seated in heavenly places, and you're actually seated next to him. So look at somebody next to you and say, you're really not down here either. <laughs> but I think what happens is we live down, we, instead of living up there, we live down here. All right? That's right. And we've got to... Know that we have access into Father through Jesus. Yeshua has given us access by his blood, but because his spirit has caused us to ascend into our heavenly place and we are positioned in that place, therefore you have access. But once you gain what you are looking for, you bring it back down here, see, and you walk with it down here, all right? Now, that's a real key for you this year. What are you walking out down here, all right? Now, with that, here's what we have to learn when heaven invades. We've got to learn how to hear the Spirit of God. See, Holy Spirit is in us and is dwelling around us. So we have the third person of the Trinity amongst us here in this meeting. I mean, Holy Ghost is here. So how are we going to move with Holy Ghost while he's here? See, that's what you have to ask. Or else we're just going to hear John sing. Right. Yeah, right. 
we're going to look at Joseph from what we know about it. We're not going to see him the way Holy Spirit is moving with it. All right? And so you've got to be able to hear the Spirit of God. Now, now let me say this because I think this is a hang-up for us. I think many of us know the Word, but we don't hear the Spirit of God who is amongst us. And what we're doing, we're processing everything around us out of our knowledge, even of the Word. And that's a real danger for us this year. And you're not going to have many people share that with you. But it's what Jesus said to the Pharisees. He said, you know the Scriptures. And you know them so well that I can't show you anything. And he was God. All you got to do is read uh, John chapter 8. All right, so you have to see, I'm using the right words, how to get into your next move of God. That's what the year's about. Robert can't live in the move of God he got into when... Cindy came and a big move hit and then Toronto came after that and he followed all of that stream all the way through. I watched him to the end of it. But you've got to see how to get into your next move of God. There is a next move of God that is stirring in your heart and you have to find out how to get into it. It might not be through this stream. It might be in another river that you get into that move of God. Now, because we're in a season of the supernatural and the angelic, we're going to have to be very aware of angels. In other words, come in or get up or go into your house or wherever you go, no matter how dark or how light, expecting angelic visitation. Uh, it was very interesting. Uh, all of a sudden, when on uh, Friday night before I ministered, we were in worship. Worship wasn't anything like wh what we do here. And all of a sudden, an angelic presence came in. I felt it. At that moment on the web, Marty texted and said an angel just came in. See, she was aware even here that an angel came in there as she was watching. We had it right there. I just told Barbara that. I had, it had just come out of my mouth, then the text came and I showed it to Barbara. See, there is an awareness that you have to come into this year. An alertness of how you have to come into this year. And then you've got to then ask the Lord, show me vision so I can unlock my next provision. And you're going to have to go where God sends you to get it. I watched him because uh, Cindy said this. People, I've always been the one people come to to get their provision. That's shifting this year some way. I've watched it the last three or four months where the Lord has said, now, wait a minute. If you are unwilling to allow your gift, remember she said that, there's some snare in your gift. And the Lord said, your snare is you just give freely. And you're, I will make sure I am teaching others on this provision thing, and you might not be it for him. All right? So he's had to really deal with me in it. Because I'd rather just hand somebody $500 and say, I have faith, because I have faith to do that, that you'll take this and break through with it. But it's not working like that right now. All right? So there's something he's requiring of each one of us. And yet, 
With this, I know he doesn't remove a mission. He said, when he put us here, he said, you have to, you're called to restore this whole piece of land. See, so there's something I have to do to unlock new provision from all of us if we're going to complete the project. So you see how your prayer life changes from time to time. Your actions change from time to time. And so what you have to do is always be redefining your mission field. Now, here's another thing for, about this year that is so key. A new personal responsibility comes with a new season. Personal. Look at somebody and say, he's talking about you. <laughs> There's something God has to do in each one of us personally. And you have to be putting the familiar, see, Familiar and familial spirits are what hinder you from moving forward. Those two dynamics. Familiar spirits are familial spirits. That means spirits that have been familiar to your bloodline, that know your bloodline. See, that's why it's not... uh, uh, a generational curse, really. It's a generational iniquity in our bloodline that gives spirits access to us, that know us, know our families, know all about them. So the last two years, I've had to spend spend getting rid of a familiar spirit that was linked into I know of three generations. See, so you've got to... You have to be determined in this new season to say something familiar that I'm used to must end. See, I don't want to see Barbara the way I knew Barbara in 1990. I want to walk with Barbara today and what God is doing with her today. I've watched God move with her. I've watched lots of people get delivered. And I don't want to keep remembering what they got delivered from. I had one guy ask me this past week, why can't you forget what I did? I said, well, the only thing I know is the Lord, when he forgives you, he casts it from east to west, and that's where Denton is. And so it just must be, I just know it all here. Uh, But I can't hold, you can never hold a person in any judgment based upon something that God has dealt with. Or he's going to, or it's going to come on you seven times. All right. And it's, uh, forgiveness is not about forgetting. You know, uh, forgiveness is about going to a new level of release. And uh, God is working a new grace in the midst of it. Now, here were the two statements that in Korea they couldn't get an interpretation. I can always, you know, I've, I've been so much and been in, and been had interpreters so much in my life that uh, a lot of people say it's easier for me to understand you with an interpreter because I can process the sentence you said while they're interpreting it. Uh, uh, But I've been with so many that I know when they're not getting it. And it doesn't matter what language they speak. I can just tell by the Spirit they didn't get that. And they could not get the concept of facing off to go in. In other words, you're going to have to face off something in your wilderness that has been there. Then you're going to have to turn and face off something that's in your promise. And it's that 
face-off concept that becomes very key this year in our lives. Because it's that facing off where we grab hold of the moment and gain the momentum to accelerate into our future. All right? And that's what didn't happen with the 12 leaders that were sent in to the promised land when they saw the giants the first time. They wouldn't face them off. So they said, we're not even going to get around those things. So what they did was they went back to the wilderness and made a home there because they refused to have the face off with the giants. And in it, they end, you, when you do that, you end up slandering your promise for the future. Now, we're having a lot dealt with here in America over libel and slander, but my biggest concern is that we don't slander the promise or we don't say something about God that's not right. And that's what they did. They slandered who God was and and actually spoke so against their promise, said, we don't even want to follow this any longer. Take us back to the mud pit. That's scary. These were the leaders. All right? Now, so... The real question is, how do we respond by faith? How do you make a response? And I think this is something about faith people don't understand. Faith, I'm going to show you in a moment, it requires an action. See, Chad asked me a question. Pam and I were discussing it this morning early uh, about, uh, he said, does everybody have an opportunity. What about those people that don't have access to revelation like we do? What about those people in a tribe somewhere? Well, the Bible addresses that. It says in Romans 1.20 that even the creation around them can put together their faith. And they can learn God out of creation. Now, here's the catch to this. Lots of people believe in God, that there is a God. Demons believe there's a God. It's more than just believing that God is there. And and you could be somewhere out in a jungle and you could know God created that. But you're going to have to have some sort of faith response toward that. We, we even have records. We, were, we read books back in the 70s where, from missionaries where they would get to tribes that no one had ever been to and start communicating uh, Yeshua to them, and they already knew, knew Jesus because God had revealed himself to them. God will make sure a person has an opportunity. All right. And you get into predetermination, uh, predestiny and all of that, but you still have to know God is a loving God who wants people to know that he made them. All right. Uh, And he finds you. He seeks you out. He chose you. And he'll find you wherever you are. I remember when I went to tell, because in in the business world, I'd gone very up very quickly and was known in the oil companies from, because I was helping design a program that had never been designed before. We were working with EOC. We were working with... uh, 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 IBM, 
and we were developing a new something, a new field called human resource, which that was new at that time with me, which is now a concept, but that wasn't the word at that time. And so when the Lord fell on me and showed me how I had to surrender fully and go with him into a different uh, sphere, which was our church went into a building program and he chose me to be the administrator and to learn him in the church world because I hadn't been in the church world. And <clears throat> I went up to tell a senior VP of management systems that I was leaving. He had gotten a letter. And that was where I had originally been hired. And he was looking out the window when they said, announced that I was there to see him. And he turned around and he was weeping. He said, 40 years ago, I surrendered to the ministry. And I haven't been faced with it till this moment. That was the toughest, meanest, worst guy. He's the one who kicked the side of my desk in at the second week, you know. And I knew, some way I knew, he had resisted doing what the Lord had asked him to do. And there he was saying, God just found me after all these years and confronted me because of the faith that you're stepping out into. See, that's what faith does. Faith confronts. Now, here comes the real question. See, it's these two questions. Will you postpone your future uh, or will you gain momentum? Or, because when you don't gain momentum, you're postponing your future. You're, you're saying, I'm not going to accelerate into that. Uh, and then, here's the other question. How will you respond with faith? Now, let's look at Mark chapter 10 for a second. Because you're going to have to say, Lord, how am I responding by faith? Any response you give without faith, it's impossible to please God. That's for all of us. That's how you detect your sin. That you didn't respond by faith in a situation when you knew that the one who gives faith lives inside of you. The one who is faith. Uh, the object of your faith lives here inside of you. So what, you're going to have to account to him when you don't respond by faith. Uh, I used to tell Robert, are Linda and I the only one here that has to repent every day <laughs> over something? Because I don't see anybody doing it except us two. <laughs> because we had, it, it was built within us a structure that communicated faith to us, and we knew when we violated it. See, that's the most important thing with you is knowing when you sin. A lot of people, that's why I, I hate to tell people they sin. You know, Nathan had to tell David he sinned. David should have known that he sinned with Bathsheba and Uriah. He should have known he sinned when he did. Now, now here's the bottom line of that. He should have known he sinned when he did what the children of Israel did. Because he knew the word. And he didn't go to war just like they didn't go to war. And that's where his sin was. See, all of a sudden you need to know when you don't respond by faith and do something. You need to say, wait a minute, I missed a step here. And there's no way out of it other than through repentance. You can't get out of it just by, I'm sorry. I'm sorry won't do it. Uh, because I'm sorry is a sugar coat 
for repentance. Because repentance, you're going to change why you did it. See, you're going to say, my gosh, I don't want to do that again. All right? Now, here in Mark chapter 10 is really uh, a key on responding by faith that is so key for us, and it's uh, blind Bartimaeus. He, he, now I want, I want you to think about this. He's blind. His eyes don't work, all right? Uh, and here, uh, something begins to happen, and Jesus is at Jericho. Well, remember now, Jericho had a curse on it, very much like Nazareth did until Elisha removed the curse off of it. But once the Lord had Elisha remove the curse on it, it became a place where people came to know the Lord. The Lord missioned it. He, he apostolic, he, he served apostolically over the city of Jericho. And so he's gone to Jericho to evangelize it and his disciples and a great multitude and while he's there, blind Bartimaeus is sitting by the road begging. Now, begging is not a faith response. Some need to write that down. <laughs> All right. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, that he had to hear it, not see it. So he had to know something about this Jesus of Nazareth that was going on in the whole area. But he heard that Jesus was coming by where he was sitting begging. And he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. That's a faith response. All of a sudden, he responds. See, one of the things I want to say to you is the Lord knows when we respond by faith. Yeah. Uh, and everybody around him wanted him to stop responding by faith. They tried to shut him up, shut him down. And he kept yelling, son of David, have mercy on me. He knew it was his moment for momentum to change in his life. Now, I want you to write that down. There is a moment where your momentum changes. All of a sudden, something shifts. All right? And so, one finally looked at him and said, lighten up. Be of good cheer. Get happy because he's calling and wants to see you. Because he responds by faith. Look at somebody and say, if you respond by faith, you're going to get his attention. So he threw off his old garment. Now that, that'll preach. And got up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? Well, when Jesus asks that question to you, you're going to have to respond. This is how faith works. Yeah. See, when you're having faith is this conversation where you're getting to know someone. You're getting to know what they're about. Then all of a sudden, you ask them something. Or they asked you something. So it's this two-way dialogue that's going on that there has to be some response in. All right? And he said, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Rabboni. So he knew this man was a teacher. He knew he was a teacher. He had heard about his teaching. See, you can hear about Robert's teaching, but you're still going to have to respond to what he taught. That's what 
is so concerning about America. We're constantly being taught, but we have to respond to the teaching. All right? Now, in it, he does that, and he said, Rabboni, I want to receive my sight. And Jesus said, well, go your way. Your faith made you whole. Your faith in what you had heard about my teachings just made you whole. You weren't just taught. You responded by faith by yelling like a wild banshee on the road. You got rid of that old beggar's garment. Now, that has, you caused that to come into you and now you can see. I don't think we get that about miracles either. How you respond is how that miracle begins to develop. All right? That's why we have to have teachers, but we have to have preachers so they can hear the Word of God, too. The Bible says that. And you have to have apostles, and you have to have prophets But you can be prophesied to 24 hours a day and never respond to the prophecy. And so that's why when we're giving like we give here, which is very unique, the way we give here, you're responding by faith. Every time you walk up here like you're doing right now or you'll do in the service or whenever God tells you, you need to realize you're no different than blind Bartimaeus throwing off that beggar garment on God, on, oh God, I got to pay my bill. Oh God, I got to pay my bill. And you're coming up here and you're responding to some sort of word that just came forth and the minute you do it, something starts being activated in you. The minute Leanne responded, when I asked her, she had to exercise faith to respond. See, it's not just through giving. The minute you say something, Raboni, I want, I want to receive my sight. Some of you don't get, here's what I want to end up saying in this scenario. Some of you don't get his attention before you ask what you need. You're just begging and asking for what you need. You're not getting the attention of God before you're asking him. See, that's what I I noticed Catherine here. She has been healed, but she's had to get God's attention to be healed. See, she had to respond in a way so she could get healed. All right? Now, this is key for this year. Now, let me show you a couple of things on this. The idea is coming. See, faith comes several ways. You can have it traditional. I can tell you my testimony, and you can say, well... I know that happened in him. Uh, But still, you're going to have to respond to my testimony some way. Uh, Hell hates my testimony. Therefore, hell will respond to your testimony also. Because if hell doesn't shut down your testimony, it's going to overcome hell. All right? And so there has to be this issue of response, but faith comes by revelation. Something all of a sudden is removed from your eyes, like blind Barmaeus, and you see something. 
Anna and I were talking about it this morning. She saw something when she was reading a book this week. Something had to be removed from her eyes for her to see it. And you can't just assume it's going to be in your familiar setting that that's going to happen. And then all of a sudden, with that response you give, God notices. They were in captivity for 400 years, and it said, finally, they got sick of the mud pits, they got sick of the captivity, they started screaming up to God. Now, think about it. These people had only heard about God. But it had been taught, it was in their DNA, they were the Hebrew people. They came out of Abraham. But when they started, they said, well, if he's out there, let's get his attention. Horton, here's a who. Go home and watch it. Same thing. Same principle. If you'll watch that movie, you'll see what it takes. All of a sudden, they're screaming loud enough, and it says, God heard and acknowledged their cry. Now, he didn't come down and fix the situation. He went to Midian and found a guy that he had been dealing with 40 years prior. Now, hear what I'm saying to you. This is how God works. He had been dealing with this guy 40 years prior, teaching him, moving with him, but the guy had an anger problem, killed somebody, and got, had to go to Midian. His name was Moses. He finds him, and all of a sudden, he reveals himself to him. Now, let's look at this. Put all of that up, Brian, so we can see it. See, God reveals himself some way to us whether it's through creation or whether all of a sudden we hear by a preacher, but we are saved, the Bible says, by grace through faith. But we are also saved by the confession of our mouth. That's that little scripture that you have to put over there that's in Romans as opposed to Ephesians. And there's something you're going to have to say or utter that's linked with your salvation. All right? We're, you are named after him when you're being knit together in your mother's womb. You think you're named after your earthly father or earthly mother. He's already got a name on you. The Bible says it. Uh, see, and then he's given us Torah. That's why Wycliffe Bible is so important because they're translating the Word of God so people can not, they can all say, at least we had this. All right? And that's what makes the Jews so key. They had Torah given to them, the Hebrew people. But God didn't give it to them in Egypt. They had to cry out and get on their journey before they got it. All right? And so, and what the Lord did, he would give some people a gift to write down what needs to be written down for all of us. You have to have, and this is why some people won't come in to know the Lord. They'll say, well, a man wrote the Bible. Inspired by the Spirit of God. See, because they can't see the Spirit until their eyes are open, they're just looking at it from a humanistic standpoint. All right? And really, that book has one purpose for you. What does God require out of me? That's it in a nutshell. You, we all going to have to answer when we see him, what did you require out of me that I didn't do? See, we, he might not have required somebody to quit smoking. See, it's what did you require out of me 
during the time frame you put me on earth. He might not require me not to drink coffee. But he might require violence. He might say, well, the only way you could get into the revelation that I had for you, you had to quit drinking coffee and you wouldn't do it. That's why Isaiah 58 says, let me choose the fast for you. Don't let religion choose the fast for you. I can't just because God tells me to quit drinking coffee, I can't make it a religious rule for everybody else. Now, now hear what I'm saying to you. That's how religion works. He required the Jewish people, once they got back in their land, to do vineyards. And do you know, not for Welch's grape juice. God required it of them. Because that was the whole miracle working activity, the very first one that he did to cause his own disciples to believe. See, so I think it's this faith response that we've got to understand. Now, man has a responsibility, like I started this time, on how he deals with revelation. See, you are a dangerous being. Look at somebody and say, you're a lot more dangerous than what you know. You don't see yourself like this. You have immense power and authority. I think Mr. Trump knows he's a dangerous individual. And he acts accordingly. But when you belong to the Lord and you've given your life to him and you realize he's real and you realize he's pursuing you to give you all of a sudden revelation makes sense. He's got to uncover who he is and show it to you. That is amazing. I can go all the way through the word of God showing us instance after instance. And so what he does to Moses, he causes a bush to start burning and the bush doesn't burn. The fire is in the bush without it burning. Bushes burn in the desert just because of the heat. But this bush is not burning up, so it grabs Moses' Moses's attention. And he has to respond to this bush. That's how faith works. He has concealed who he is, but now all of a sudden he's coming down. He's concealed for 400 years who he is. But now he's coming down to reveal who he is. And they're going to have to respond by faith. And so all of a sudden, they see him doing all these miracles. After Moses responds, Moses goes as the voice of God to Pharaoh. And they start, all of a sudden, God starts revealing himself to Egypt. Everybody in Egypt could make a choice to know God. You just didn't have to be Hebrew. That's why a lot of Egyptians went with them. But they're going to have to move by faith and not by Egyptian mentality. Same way in America. You're going to have to move by faith and not American mentality. Because if American mentality doesn't line up with faith, you have to make a choice. And so once Moses does that, God sets him on this journey of revelation. Only notice how he had to deal with him for 40 years. 
Three of them he kept revealing himself to. Moses, Joshua, Caleb. Because they kept responding by faith. The others he just had to kill off. Because they chose their own death sentence. See, they made a choice to be killed off. Because they didn't respond by faith when they had the opportunity 40 years prior. Now this is real key for us in this year. It's this faith response that's going to lead us into things that we've been praying for for years and years. That's good, Brian. I'll just stop, I'll just stop here for a moment. Let me say this. That's why last week and this week are so important. You can't lean on your own understanding. Because if you lean on your own understanding, you're going to do one of two things. You're going to miss your moment. And here's the other thing. You're not going to succeed in what you've been called to do this year. What is it you would have me do for you? What is it that you want to have done? And I think we've got to respond to that. What is it that you want to see that you've not seen? Don't be afraid to ask him. And don't be afraid to get his attention this year. Now, let me go back to Joseph in reality. I feel like he got God's attention. Because God pursued him, didn't he? And I'll have him share that. And he had to respond. And then all of a sudden now he's in a new place. If you need to get in a new place, hear this message. Be willing to see the bush burning. He can light it up for you. I don't know what your bush is. But be willing to see it. He will get your attention this year. And when he gets your attention, turn and let what's been concealed be revealed. And then respond. Respond. I got a hold on. There's something happening here this morning. When John was singing about the diamonds, I leaned over to Lisa and I said, put a cap on me. Because something's dark. And, and God said, I don't want to put a cap on it. I don't want to put a cap on it. And he said, I'm about to release some gems from the heavenly realms. He says, diamonds and emeralds and rubies and sapphires. But he said, it's not a gem like you've ever known before. It's not a gem like we know gems because they're coming down. He says, in the diamonds, I've got light for inventions. I've got a pinpoint to show you the way. He says, in the emeralds, there's a growing season. I'm going to begin to fall on you in a new way. He said, the rubies, I'm going to open up realms of glory, realms of glory to all of us for what we need to move ahead. He said in the, in the uh, sapphire, he said, there's going to be such, such a swift wind blow over you that you're going to know that you know that he is God. And he says, just put a lever Put the lever, put the lever, put the lever. Robert, Robert. 
Robert, one thing you've never taught in linked with the tribes and linked with uh, the months. You've never taught on those gems and what they look like. The Lord says, uncover who we are through that breastplate. Uncover who we are through that breastplate and make us a righteous people for the year ahead. Look at somebody and say, you are righteous. We just need to have it uncovered. We need to have it revealed to us. Now, Father, we thank you. We thank you right now for what you're doing. 